back to a time when you were idealistic, when you could do anything and you thought the world was fair. Do you remember what it felt like to believe in such a pure way? I do. When I was 19 years old, I was overflowing with optimism. I joined my parents on a medical relief trip to Nepal. And one day, hosting a medical clinic under a tree, a man ran in and begged us to come see his wife who had just given birth. Something had gone terribly wrong. We walked several hours up to her village, and when we got there, my dad sprang into action, giving her powerful IV drugs. In the morning, we awoke to a small miracle. The young mother was sitting up in bed, nursing her baby daughter, and shyly smiling. As we walked back down the valley, I remember this incredible feeling. We had actually and truly saved a life and forever changed the story for one sweet family. Days later, we learned that the mother had died orphaning her weak old daughter. At this news, I wept and wept. My childhood belief that the world was fair was shattered, and I wondered if what we had done, parachuting in with our Western magic, was really a cruelty, raising everyone's hopes before crushing them more brutally than before. That was the day my belief died. In the years since, I've worked hard to rebuild that belief, to deepen it. And through working with women living in unspeakable poverty, I've learned a lot about the power of belief, what it means, and why it matters. Belief is defined as trust, faith, or confidence in something or someone. Listen to these words, trust, faith, confidence, Belief is in our gut. We think with our head. We believe with our soul. And research tells us that when we lose connection to something bigger than ourselves, we're less happy, less fulfilled, and more likely to feel anxiety or depression. Sound familiar? We Americans are impoverished. We are hungry for connection. We are hungry for meaning. We are hungry to believe. So for the next 10 minutes, I ask you to believe with me. Here's what I believe. I believe that we can end extreme poverty in our lifetime. This might sound idealistic, but through working with women living in unspeakable poverty, I've seen the transformational power of belief. Belief in ourselves, belief in others, and belief in something bigger than us. 14 years ago, I was walking with two friends in a slum in Uganda. We met a woman rolling strips of paper into colorful beads. Her name was Millie Grace Akenna. Millie told us that she and her five children had fled northern Uganda where rebels were abducting children to become soldiers. The entire family now survived by working in a rock quarry, using handheld mallets to pound pebbles into stones. And for this bone-breaking work, they earned about 65 cents a day. Millie pulled out a huge bag of necklaces but told us there were no markets. Now, you might ask, why had she made all this jewelry if there were no markets? What exactly did she think was going to happen? We bought a couple necklaces and went on our way, and in the days that followed, people kept admiring them. Finally, we thought, how are there no markets? So we called Millie and a 100 other women in her community, and we bought a couple necklaces from each woman. Now, between the three of us who were there today, on that day, we had not one day of business experience. Not a single day between the three of us. So you might also ask, what were we doing buying those necklaces? What exactly did we think was going to happen? The thing is, we weren't thinking, we were believing. 
We brought the necklaces back to the United States and we started selling them. And seven months later, with no paid staff and a very basic website, we had a tiny article in O Magazine. And we sold $90,000 worth of beads in six weeks. We were stunned by this initial success. And so we founded Bead for Life, buying necklaces from women in Uganda and selling them abroad. But we didn't want to parachute in. And we didn't want the women to become dependent on us. So while beads were the heart of how we started, the biggest impact that we've had to date has come through Street Business School, a program which combines entrepreneurial training and confidence building to help women start small businesses and lift their families out of poverty forever. Through Street Business School, we work with women like Ruth. Ruth was a single mother struggling to provide for her son, Bashir. On days that Ruth found work washing her neighbor's laundry, she and Bashir would eat one small meal. On days that she didn't find work, Ruth would try to ignore the cries of her baby and her own hunger pains. She later told me that that was a bleak time. She saw no hope for her future. Then Ruth joined Street Business School. And with the entrepreneurial training, she started a small vegetable stall. And with that business, Ruth increased her income from $22 a month to $177 a month. Through 14 years of working with women just like Ruth, I have learned that the biggest barrier to women starting businesses is not lack of access to capital, but lack of access to confidence. How many of you have ever had all the external resources you needed to do something and still not done it? What stopped you? The women we work with have been told their entire lives that they are worthless, and they've started to believe it. So the most important thing we do in our program is to believe. We believe in women until they can believe in themselves. I asked Ruth the most important thing she had learned, and she responded, obu tenyoma, which translates not underestimating myself. Because transformation lives at the intersection of belief and opportunity. Once women believe in themselves, they take the entrepreneurial training and change their lives. On average, women in our program go from earning $1.35 a day. Two years after they graduate, they're earning $4.19 a day, which means they have risen above the global poverty line. They're able to feed their kids, send them to school, and get the medical care that they need. And as incredible as this change in material wealth is, even more inspiring to witness is the dignity of human potential. As one woman said to me, now I'm somebody. So we had this incredible program serving a small number of women in Uganda. At the same time, I knew that one out of every 10 people on the planet, 700 million people, is struggling to survive on less than a dollar a day. So a small and effective program on one hand, a huge global need on the other. What you ask was the problem. The problem was me. I was afraid. I didn't believe in myself. Because you know, it's really easy to run around the world and talk about how important it is for women to believe in themselves, as long as we're talking about other women. <laughs> Three years ago, I summoned the courage, and I did something terrifying. I said out loud and to the world that it was my intention to help at least one million women lift their families out of poverty through street business school. And then I immediately looked around and tried to put it back in. <laughs> well, as hard as it is to say you're going to help one million out of poverty, it turns out it's even harder to do it. And the year that followed was the most difficult year of my life. 
For months, I lay awake in bed, feeling like I was failing as a leader, as a mother, as a wife. And so many times, I thought about walking away. And every time I did, one image came to me, the image of a Ugandan woman laying awake at night. But this woman unable to sleep because she didn't know how she would feed her children the next day. And that image helped me get through one more day, and one more day, and one day after that. I'm still scared, but I have learned that to believe in myself means to feel afraid and keep going anyway. And Street Business School is now active in seven countries across Africa, on our way to reaching one million women by 2027. <laughs> John F. Kennedy is a man who knew about the power of believing in something bigger than ourselves. He said we would put a man on the moon. When he spoke those words, nothing in science or physics changed. But our perception of what was possible was recalibrated. The impossible becomes possible because of belief. The good news is that belief is a choice. Belief is a choice. We can believe every day to believe in ourselves or not. We can choose every day to believe in people around us or not. And we can choose every day to believe in something bigger than ourselves that's huge and seems crazy. I believe that we can end extreme poverty in our lifetime. And this is not idealistic wishing, but hard-earned experience. And though I am still afraid, I am no longer paralyzed. So, what do you believe in? <coughs> what will change in your life when you believe in yourself? What will change in the lives of those around you when you believe in them? And what will change in the world when we all believe that the impossible is possible and work to create transformation that can affect billions of people around the world. That power is in our hands. So tonight, I invite each and every one of you to believe. Thank you.